Local 3, Article 6, uh, Section 3A, the business manager shall be held responsible, solely responsible, for the results in the field. He shall, with the approval of the body, appoint from time to time as many assistants to be known as business representatives and office assistants who may be discharged by the business manager without notice. He shall have full charge of his assistants, requiring them to conform to such rules or perform such duties as he may decide upon, and he shall assign his assistants to work in such district or territory as he deems best. And so at this time, uh, we need to replace uh, John, who has handled the desk, uh, the guy that deals with all of the problems, also represented uh, the street lighting division as well, and this next representative will handle that same assignment. I call on Brother Richard Duva, Jr. to come up to the, to the floor. read the bio. Uh, Richie graduated from Mepham High School in Belmore in June of 1981. He attended New York Institute of Technology in the summer classes. He studied at Nassau Community in Suffolk for two years before entering the apprentice program in February of 84. He was elected class representative throughout his apprenticeship training. He's a member of the A Apprentice Advisory Committee from 84 to 89. Became an A journeyman in August of 1989. He joined the Allied Union Social Club of Queens in February of 90, and he held offices of trustee, corresponding secretary, financial secretary, and is presently the vice president. He's a member of the Local 3 Motorcycle Club, the Catholic Council of Electrical Workers, and the Keystone Club. Rich worked as in the capacity of journeyman, sub foreman, foreman, general foreman, and superintendent for Municipal Electric, EJ Electric, ADCO, and Hawkeye. He's currently working as a superintendent for Thoreau LLC in our outside line division. He served as chairman as the Queen's Permanent District Organizing Committees, Chairman of the Queen's Dodge Committee, the Local 3 uh, Election Assignment Committee, as well as Chairman of the Queen's Job Tracker Committees, a member of the Wage and Policy Committee, and the Local 3 Election Board. Uh, Richie is a Local 3 Boot Camp Mentor and an Apprentice Mentor. He's been a member of the Christopher Columbus Committee, co-chaired the festival in 2010, and was the chairman in 2012. He also serves as the Secretary of the Laws and Resolution Committee of Local 3. He's a NEAT, N-J-A-T-C, Test Administrator. That's the outside stuff. And he's a Local 3 Subcommittee Member for the Outside Line Division. He was a Subcommittee Member for the 2013 negotiations. He's a third generation Local 3 electrician following in the footsteps of his grandfather, Nick, and his father, Richard. He's married to his wife, Karen, for 25 years. They have two children, daughter, Christina, 24 years old, and son, Nick, uh, fourth generation, local three, electrician apprentice. Brothers and sisters, please welcome our new business representative, Richie Duva. Thank you. Good evening, Business Manager of Christo Christopher Erickson, President John Marshall, Assistant Business Manager Joe Sanagate, and Paul Ryan, officers and members. First and foremost, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you, Business Manager Christopher Erickson, for your vote of confidence in affording me this prestigious opportunity to represent Local Union Number 3, the greatest labor union and membership in the country. I am truly blessed to be amongst those who represent our members and look forward to the challenges ahead. Almost 30 years ago, I was called by our apprentice director at the time, Buddy Jackson, and told that I was accepted into Local 3. By coincidence, I had just received a letter from the New York City Police Department, also telling me that I was accepted by them. I had a decision to make, a major decision to make. Don't tell me you're a cop and I'm under arrest. <laughs> No, I had a major decision to make, and there's no doubt in my mind that I made the right choice. Absolutely.
Being a third generation Local 3 electrician, I came into the program with it in mind that it was time to give back to the union that provided for my family since 1937, when my grandfather Nick Duva was organized by Fred Hansen Sr. into the I Division. I became active right away with the Apprentice Advisory Committee and softball team and never looked back. It has been the best 29 years of my life and I've always carried my union card with pride. There are many people who I need to recognize for paving the path to my success. I have just a few to mention here tonight. First and foremost, I have to thank my grandfather Nicholas and my father Richard Sr. for opening the door for me. Upon passing through the door, I came across local three members, Tony Benevento, Joe Madsen, Jack Minogue, Joe Bechtold, past Allied Club presidents, James McBurn, James McGee, senior assistant business manager, Raymond Melville, and assistant business manager, Joseph Sanagate, business representatives, John DeTusa, Austin McCann, and of course, my greatest advocate, Queens business representative, James Boer, all people who have played a key role in my mentoring. There are many others, and you know who you are. I wish there was time to thank you all. In closing, I would like to say, under the direction and leadership of our business manager and brother, Christopher Erickson, I promise to work vigilantly to continue to uphold the traditions and values we all benefit from today that were established for us by him and our previous leaders, Thomas and Harry Van Osdale. As we move forward with his visions for the future of Local Union Number 3, I promise to represent our union and its membership with the same drive and determination as our business manager, keeping in mind the ultimate goal to preserve what we have and to continue to build on it, as well as maintain Local 3's status as the greatest labor union in the United States. I am truly honored. I'm almost done. <laughs> I am truly honored and blessed to have been given this opportunity and look forward to working with all of our representatives, as well as you, my brothers and sisters, in accomplishing this, compl this common goal. God bless the USA, and may God bless Local 3. Thank you and good night. Congratulations, Richie. You're going to be a great asset. So um, I want to uh, report also that I recently uh, received a call from Vice President uh, Siegel uh, notifying me of the establishment of an IBW National Youth Council that was set up by President Hill, and that each IBW district would have one representative. Our district, our district, the third district, includes New York State, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. And I'm proud to announce that he appointed Local 3 journeyman Christopher Erickson, Jr. to represent our district. And I call on this young man to come up and make a report. Good evening and thank you, Business Manager Erickson, President Marshall, officers and representatives of Local 3 and brothers and sisters for this opportunity to give a brief report on the Young Worker Movement. I'm 29 years old, a fifth generation Local 3 journeyman wireman. I was born after 1980, so I've grown up in the age of Ronald Reagan, deregulation and globalization, CNN and Fox News, 9-11 and the Great Recession. It's also been the golden age of technology, the internet, instant connections, and social media. But unfortunately, today, the natural and generational progression of work has been upset. If you think of the image of an escalator, you enter the workforce at the bottom, rise up through your working life, and eventually come to step off at retirement age. However, there's much difficulty these days for young workers to even step onto that escalator. Fewer workers towards the top of the escalator are retiring. The challenging job market, especially tough for young workers, has only begun to show signs of improvement. 
For the past five years, unemployment for workers under 24 has been roughly 10 percent higher compared to workers over 25, topping out at 20 percent unemployment in 2010. The high cost of education affects young workers and their parents for years due to increased tuition and high levels of student loan debt upon graduation. Other challenges include lower wages, coupled with increase in cost of living, housing, health care, family and child care costs, and increased personal debt. That's why the young, worker is so, the young worker movement is so important for the continuation of the labor movement, not just to stem the losses sustained since before the 1980s, but to grow and turn the trend upward. Young workers aren't getting the union education at the dinner table like older generations did. We struggle against not only a negative perception of the labor movement, but hardly any understanding at all. The reality is unions and organized labor are being phased out of young people's understanding of work, and with it, the knowledge of our history and benefits. The lack of a Labor Day parade this year is just one example. This movement's about bringing a new generation of young workers into the labor movement and encouraging the young workers that are already involved. As such, actions have been taken to face these challenges. As per the AFL-CIO Resolution 55 passed in 2009 in support of the AFL programs for young workers, the Next Up program began with the stated goals of engaging, empowering, and mobilizing young workers under the age of 35. This led to two national summits attended by local three delegations, a national young worker advisory council, and young worker groups across the country. Similarly, Similarly, the IBW created Renew, re-energizing next generation electrical workers. 48 young workers, including myself as a rep of the 3rd District, attended the IBW International Convention in Vancouver in 2011. The goals of the Renew Caucus at the conclusion of the convention in included increasing youth involvement and instilling a sense of accountability within young workers. Many of the solutions resulting from the caucus have already been instituted in Local 3 or have since been implemented, such as apprentice committees like our own, a mentoring program similar to ours, and growing young, work, young worker groups in the trade movement. Last year at the business manager's urging, Local 3 hosted a young worker conference organized by a group of young workers within Local 3 and had over 200 attendees. The, the itinerary consisted of interactive workshops, skits, guest speakers, and a party outside with live music. On a larger scale, International Vice President Don Siegel has helped create the 3rd District Youth Caucus. As a co-chair, I've been tasked to grow the labor movement on a regional scale while focusing on specific tactics on the local level. We've been invited to the 3rd District Progress Meetings to present an educational workshop, organize a community service project, and emphasize the connections between young workers throughout the 3rd District. Local 3's delegation will continue on to Washington, D.C. to take part in the IBW's Youth Council meetings at the Renew Conference as per Resolution 14. So as older generations retire and the workforce changes, the importance of the young worker movement grows more imperative every day. Opportunities arise for young workers to be involved, such as young journeyman Wendell, Lee, Wendell Yee with the Electrical Workers Minority Caucus, their youth caucus, and Manny Aleskis, who's going to represent Local 3 as a young worker on a professional occupational health and safety panel next week to give the perspective of a young building trades worker. It's never been more important than now to build a positive perception of unions for young workers earlier in their career, building awareness of the labor movement while instilling responsibility and accountability through education and action. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Uh, so, 35 is the number. I've told you that, right? 35, you're good to go. You're above 35, you're called seasoned. You are now a seasoned worker. So let me see how many under 35. Raise your hand. How many over? Oh, there's going to be plenty of work for you young guys, I'll tell you that much, you know? <laughs> Seasoned are what you are at 35, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that when I report on uh, the AFL-CIO convention. But Local 3 just hosted the New York State business managers out at Santorini, and Vice President Siegel was there, and he requested that Chris report on the district young worker activities. And so it was the first time that I had the opportunity to introduce him at front of Mike. But I didn't have any bio, so I winged it. So I said, Chris was born on July 30th, 1984. 
He had the binky in his mouth for six months. He was potty trained by one year, and he could read before he went into kindergarten. <laughs> the New York State Controller was in the room that day, out at Santorini, and he was present, and he heard Chris's remarks, and he commented how happy he was to see that Local 3 and the IBEW has made this commitment to engage young workers. Chris did a good job, and he'll continue to do a great job on behalf of all the members of Local 3. Now, I want to read his bio, his real bio, is that Christopher Erickson, Jr. is a fifth generation member of Local 3. He was born in Lechester and raised in Massapequa Park. He attended Chaminade High School and the New York Institute of Technology, graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in Architectural Technology and Construction Management in 2005. He was briefly a member of the ADM division in Local 3 before beginning his A apprenticeship in August of 2007. And I remember that day because I said to this membership how proud I was that my son, after having graduated from college at a time when people were telling people, don't come into Local 3, he decided to come into Local 3. And I was very proud of that in 2007. And it was during his apprenticeship, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Labor Studies as well from the Harry Van Osdale Center for Labor Studies at SUNY Empire State. And he represented his peers as the graduating class speaker. Throughout his apprenticeship, Christopher represented Local 3 at various young worker conferences, such as the AFL-CIO Next Up in 2010, and the third district as representative of the Renew delegation, as he said at the IBW convention in Vancouver. He also chaired the youth conference, helped co-chair the youth conference in 12. He now chairs the third district youth caucus, and again was recently appointed to represent the whole third district of the IBW on the National Youth Council. Chris was a member of the Apprentice Advisory Committee. He's currently a member of the Wage and Policy. He's a bagpiper and a sort of light, uh, pipes and drums of Local 3. And he's a member of the Catholic Council. He's married to uh, his wife, Sarah. And on September 5th, at a special session of the Executive Board, the Executive Board accepted the resignation of Brother Cliff Toohey, who served for four years, and who has been appointed as a business representative and acted, the board acted to elect Christopher Erickson Jr. to fill the unexpired term of Cliff Toohey as an executive board member of Local 3. <laughs> this, this, position, this position requires a commitment to serve this brotherhood, and I have no doubt, I have no doubt that this man will serve with distinction. Please welcome our newest executive board member of Local 3, my son, Christopher Erickson, Jr. be brief after that last report, but uh, I just wanted to thank Business Manager Erickson, fellow officers, and the membership of Local 3 for supporting this opportunity for a young worker to continue the work of this great union on a daily basis, carrying out the responsibilities in the Constitution and bylaws. I'm extremely proud and humbled to serve this membership as an officer of Local 3. Thank you very much to my family, my wife, and I appreciate this opportunity very much. Thank you. You know, I agonized over that decision. I know that there are people that'll say nepotism and all of that, and there are people that are never happy about a lot of things. But I do know in my heart, again, his great-grandfather up there is smiling, and I am happy that Local 3 will continue to move forward, especially with the young, young officer 
uh, I guess we're going to get dragged in, kicking and screaming into Facebook and Twitter and all of that stuff. But uh, you know what? That's the future. And uh, it's here, and it's been here for a while. And uh, I'm sure Chris will put a good face on that and move us in the right direction as a young worker.